want to welcome you to our Christmas Eve time of celebrating together as a church. I don't know who placed the celebration of Christ's birth on December 25th. We don't know what day Jesus was born. But I rejoice that this is the day we've settled on for centuries. Christmas is being celebrated when our area is physically in its darkest period. Winter has set in. Daylight is in short demand. We needed something to bring joy and cheer to get us through the long winters. But I believe Christmas is needed even more this year because of the dark circumstances we're facing with the pandemic all over the world. England just closed down this past weekend. The governor of Mississippi uh, called for yes, last Sunday to be a day of humility, prayer, and fasting. It seems that all the steps that we're taking are not enough at this moment. We must turn to God in prayer. But Christians all over the world take time to, on Christmas Eve, partake of the Lord's Supper. Last Christmas, hundreds of people came to services here in our building to worship our Lord Jesus. Today, we'll be worshiping Jesus not in one place, but in homes all over the area. I'm going to show you how you can celebrate your own Christmas communion time with us in just a moment. If you have crackers and grape juice, get them ready, and let's join together for a special time of Christmas worship. If someone were to ask me the main reason why we Christians are commanded to take the Lord's Supper, I could sum it up in two words, remember me. When Jesus gave the elements to his disciples during the first Lord's Supper, he let them know that he wanted, why he wanted them to do this beautiful symbol. It was so that they would remember him and remember the sacrifice that he's made for us. And you know, Christmas is a time for memories anyway. When Karen decorated our tree, she put ornaments on it that are decades old. No monetary worth, but they bring back so many memories. I've got some right here. Here's one that's on our tree that says, Baby's First Christmas, 1980. Our first child was born 40 years ago, and this has been on the tree every year since then. We did a segment a few Sundays ago remembering the over 30 years that our church presented the dramatized Messiah. We shared with you that the Messiah was a family event. Not only were there singers in the choir and musicians in the orchestra, but our families and children were part of many of the scenes. Now, when the children were not in a scene, adults helped them fill their time by making Christmas crafts. Let me show you some that were made then by my children. This one has John Mark's name on the back of it. And I'm going to have to explain that this is a manger and that that is baby Jesus. <laughs> but John Mark was very small when he made that Christmas ornament. Here's another one that means a lot to me. It's Santa Claus made out of a plastic spoon. And on the back of it, it says Rebecca Scoggins Christmas 1994. And so when Karen puts that on our tree, it brings back all of those memories. Some of the times when Karen decorated our tree this year, she had tears in her eyes. This will be her first Christmas since her mother went to join her father in heaven. And her mother loved Christmas, loved decorating trees, and that came back to her as she decorated her tree. So taking communion on Christmas Eve is simply a way to make sure that we remember Jesus on Christmas. It's so easy in the hustle and bustle of activities and the flood of commercialism to forget the one person this season is all about. So what should we remember about Jesus this Christmas? Let's remember how he came to us. He literally stepped out of the glory of heaven into the womb of a young woman. His first breath was not taken in a palace, but in a cave with animals. And his first bed was a manger. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 puts it this way. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor that you through his poverty might become rich. Let's remember not only how he came to us, let's remember how he went to the cross for us. I remember so clearly when, when I had the privilege of holding our little babies when they were born. There's nothing like the instant love you feel when you hold your own little baby child. And oftentimes while I held one of those little ones, their hands would reach up and take one of my fingers. The little hand would grab the finger. And those hands were so soft and so perfect. When Mary saw her baby's hands, she had no idea that one day those same hands would be stretched out on a cross and nailed there and that she would see that with her own eyes. 
Now, why is it that Jesus had to go to that cross for us? Romans 5, 8 is a good summary of why this had to happen. It says, God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, it was my sin that put him on the cross. He took my place. He died for us, it says. When I see that cross, I can never doubt God's love for me again because God proved his love. He demonstrated his love for us when he sent his son. But one more thing that we can remember, and that's this. Let's remember that Jesus rose from the, day, the grave and is with us this very moment. We call this beautiful symbol that we're about to partake in communion. That's a word that describes relationship, fellowship, intimacy. The same Jesus who came as a baby, who died and rose again, is the same Jesus who came to live in my heart on December 27th, 1969, and He's never left me since. And we can fellowship with Him at this very moment. Karen and I will be joined together at the table to help you remember the Lord in this way. We'll read the words describing the Lord's Supper found in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26, then partake of the elements and thank God for each symbol. After Karen and I have partaken of the bread, Dave and Susan will partake of the cup with you, and then Dave will close us in prayer as we wish you a Christ-filled Christmas. This is how the Bible describes that first Lord's Supper night. For I received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Can I pray before we take the element? Oh, my Lord Jesus, to know that you would come and allow yourself to be broken for us. When you found me, I was the one that was broken. When you met us when we married, our marriage was one of those that could have been potentially broken, but here you entered our lives, you entered our home, and you have made broken people whole, and we thank you for that. We just receive you in a fresh way today as the one we look to for every need. In Jesus' name, amen. Karen. Jesus died for you. Would you remember him? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Steve, Jesus died for you. Would you remember him? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now we're going to take the cup. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Susan, Jesus shed his blood for you. Remember him. Dave, Jesus shed his blood for you. Remember him. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, it has been uh, a different season for us, a tough season. But Lord, it is nothing compared to what you did for us when you went to the cross and you died on the cross for our sins and you shed that blood. Lord, for this Christmas season, most importantly, we want to remember you and remember the love that you gave when you came to this world, Lord, lived a perfect life and died on the cross for our sins. Lord, may we always remember what Christmas is really about. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas. <laughs>